Parasite storyboard book. Oh, dope. The fantastic Korean thriller nutso film. I gotta <laughs> uh, see that. Oh, it's it's fantastic, man. You, you definitely need to see it. But this is great because Bong Joon Ho, he actually put the whole script in here, but he also like thumbnail or not thumbnail storyboarded everything. These drawings are very crude and kind of rough. But it's like exactly what he needs to to make a best picture <laughs> winning Oscar film. The the thing I like seeing about that behind the scenes stuff is how simple great storytelling is. It doesn't need to be like it eventually turned into a big budget film, but it doesn't need to be anything like that behind the scenes. Like as a comic book, if it reads and if it like resonates emotionally, it doesn't even need to be a like a, a big film. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Comics Grind. I am one of your hosts, Nico Rodriguez. And I'm Ken, aka Call Me Ken, on YouTube. And thank you so much for joining us for another weekly comics discussion. Ken, man, I'm excited this week. You know why I'm excited? Why? Because it's finally chilly and cold-ish weather here in Houston, and I'm sure, you know, over, over where you are, too. Yeah, and, and that means for this podcast, I don't have to have my damn fan going in the background because it's no, really enough already. <laughs> I'm I've I've been excited about that all week. I don't know why. It's just because it's like, I I mean I don't think it ever distorts the sound or anything, but it's just kind of I always no. have like this thing like you know spinning above my head, and right? It's like always super annoying to me. But anyway, man, how's it <laughs> going, dude? <laughs> How are you doing this week? I'm doing all right, man. Uh. Yeah, when I came back into town, it was like really cold outside and super cloudy. And then uh, the next day, it was just, it was the same amount of cold, but there was zero clouds in the sky. It was crazy. Yeah. But that's like, that's just Texas weather. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been, it's definitely been good this week so far. And um, I do, another reason why I'm excited too is, um, I know, I know you're not too much of a, of a sports guy, but um, mm. <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> The uh, NBA season just kicked off, and um, I went to a, a Houston Rockets game last night, and it was it was awesome. It was the first win of the season. Oh, nice! Um, we were awful last year, but we have a few better players this year, so hopefully, um, it won't be as as miserable of a season. Oh, okay, um, cool. So yeah, that's that's another thing I'm excited about, man. But you know what else? One one more thing I'm excited about. Go for it. Making comics, man. What you been doing this week? You been doing any any any, any good comic stuff? I'm almost never doing any comic stuff. <laughs> oh come on now! Every week is worse than the last, and uh, oh geez, that's I'm not, starting to lose hope. That's not what we want to hear. <sighs> yeah. Well, this week I, I went to a wedding, and that was really fun because uh, I just got to see my family and just be like, you know, chilling out with them. I'm so like comfortable with them. I, I love them all. So it's like. All right, I got to, uh, you know, go out there and uh, experience that for a while. Um, but then on the comic side, it's basically just figuring out marketing, figuring out marketing, figuring it out. And um, right now I've set up my uh, my email like landing page so that people can like opt in, subscribe and get like uh, some free comics. Um and I'm also going through this. What is uh, just explain a uh, landing page real quick. Right. Um, a landing page is like it's that thing that like when you show up to a uh, like a website and it's just uh, sign me up to the email list. That's what a landing page is it's like. The landing page offers you something in exchange for uh, your email address and then you're now on their email list so that that person can continue to send uh, marketing messages to you like um, like hey check this out check this book out or like um, it, they don't even have to be selling you anything it could just be the um, just continual messaging that you opted in for until yeah. you unsubscribe pretty much so like so like your landing page does it have like a quick description of like what your newsletter is and then like sign up now is that kind of what it is for you it's 
So what I learned from, because I was about to mention, um, I'm working through this uh, comics launch course by Tyler James. And basically what they recommended to do for your opt-in page is give away something, give away your best stuff in exchange for uh, the email. So I was only going to give out a six page PDF that I haven't posted anywhere online. But instead, I was like, okay, I can give out both issue one and issue two of uh, Air Rider so that um, pe when people opt in, they can download those, have it collected um, in a PDF format. And then I offered the six page PDF and uh, another 10 page story I did a long time ago for free. So it's like all of that, you got all of that for free when you sign up. And Basically, you're just trying to make it as enticing as possible for your target demographic to uh, want to sign up to your email list and then get continual marketing messages from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 pretty dope, man, because, you know, I've, I've been thinking about that on my side this week, too. Um, so now that I'm kind of like for, for those of you who are uh, subscribed to my sub stack, if not, go ahead and subscribe. Yeah, get on there. <laughs> um, but but I just uh, posted it, posted an update this week or last week, um, uh -huh. just talking about basically I've finished pretty much all the the hard work um, on on the graphic novel in terms of all of the interior pages and everything and uh, yeah. chapter break pages, design pages, all that kind of stuff. Um, just waiting on a few little things, last things to do. Um, but I'm kind of like, you know, I've been in this mode where I've been working on the book for like literally the last year straight how so, many pages uh, how many pages man so it's 120 story pages and Damn. then plus the back matter and everything it's looking like it's going to be close to like 140 144 wow um, um and that's you know i i need to kind of like what i was saying is like you know i've been working on it for so long that i'm kind of um i want to take a little bit of a step back you know, and I don't want to just like go ahead straight to print and, you know, uh, uh, campaigning and all that stuff. Right. Um, even though I could, but I, I kind of, you know, it's been, I kind of want to take a step back, kind of refresh the mind, take a kind of clear vision to look at it. Um, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, an, another read through, um, yeah. look at all the pages and everything to kind of see. Um, so I'm in, so like right now I'm in this kind of mode where I'm like, okay, let me just, let me just take a week, two weeks, maybe more if I need it, mm -hmm. and um, and just kind of let let it sit, you know. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the mode that I'm in, and plus the the other thing about it too is, um, you know, I've only got one more show left for this year. Um, I'm I'm really not, you know, they always say, and you could probably add more credibility to this because you you know you've probably been uh, researching it more and everything, but. Uh -huh. um, like Kickstarters are typically not, or um, sorry, it's the the winter time, especially close to to December, is typically not a good time to run like a Kickstarter or any kind of crowdfunding campaign because um, there's just so many moving parts during the holidays. Um, so that so that's another reason why I'm like not so adamant about like getting the book out and done and printed and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so like it, it's, it's a good, I think it's a good, good time for me to kind of take a little bit of a step back and, um, work on some other stuff. Um, that's right. you know, very, very different from, <laughs> from what I've been doing with the book. And, um, just la uh, just earlier this week, I, I, I posted on Instagram on, on Halloween, kind of a, a, a cool little teaser thing for, for, for my next project that like my in-between project that I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, and that's called brew monsters. Um, basically it's, it's about five universal monster friends that open up a brewery in Transylvania. Um, it's going to be kind of like a little, kind of a, a, a you know, a, a cartoony comedy cop type of thing. Just, just a, nice. you know, real fun. Um, not, not super serious, you know, but you know, some, some themes and everything like that, but, um, <laughs> and that's kind of, I'm, I'm intending on that, that to just be like a, a, a one shot. Um, 20 to 24 pages, maybe, you know, maybe more if I've 
want to do some like backup shorts and all that kind of stuff. But um, which uh, which monsters do you have in there? So it's um, Wolfman. It's okay. uh, Frankenstein's monster. It's Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's um, uh, Dracula. And it's Mummy. Mummy. The Mummy. Um, Dracula mummy, and mummy. Okay. Mummy's name is is Mumford in uh in 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 my book. So oh yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. It's 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 gonna be a fun thing, man. And it's um it's kind of just like a a good kind of like palate cleanser. I haven't spoken too much about it except for obviously this kind of the first time I'm speaking much about it. Um, and this will nice. post in post in a couple weeks or whatever. Um, but yeah, man. And and so that's what I was thinking about, like when you were talking about newsletters and things. Um, mm -hmm. So like. My my intention with that is to start serializing those pages as I finish them on my Substack. Um, nice. Which you know, obviously, it's it's the newsletter service. So, right. um, as as you learn more more info on all that stuff, um, let me know if there's any kind of kind of tricks of the trade that you that you pick up. <clears throat> uh, in terms of like uh, like Kickstarter and whatnot. No, uh, just, I'm just talking about like in terms of like the uh, newsletter stuff because you said that you, oh, yeah. you know, working on your newsletter things and but you yeah. use, you use Mailchimp, is that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I use Mailchimp currently. It's free for the first two thousand um, sub email subscribers, mm -hmm. and then after that, you have to start paying. But I I just chose it like maybe like four or five years ago just because okay, it's free. I can sign up for free and uh, start my list that way. But I only started taking it seriously this year and started uh, getting people on the list from there. Um, I would say with the uh, Kickstarter thing, you don't have to worry about the month that you launch in. Uh, basically, on the course, they, it said, like, that's a myth. It's like, you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the month that you um, launch the book. It, it could be December. It could be January. Uh, it could be during tax season. Like, um, you know, it I don't be, know. I've, it could be an economic downturn it doesn't matter yeah exactly like uh i don't remember exactly why he said you could do it at any time but I, he said it didn't matter as much as um people would think yeah yeah and, the, and that that's interesting because i would think it i mean i would think it does i mean just like me as too a, as, as a consumer right like in as a consumer i'm less likely to um you know buy things for myself you know, because I know that I got to spend money on other people, you know? Right. So, and, and typically you're not typically like, you know, pledging to Kickstarters for people's Christmas presents or something, you know? Um, that's, that's right. not a thing, but I don't know. Or it I could mean, be a kick. Uh, it could be a, a Christmas present. Well, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh -huh. I don't know how many times I've gone and been like, Hey man, uh, I just kickstarted this comic for you. Merry Christmas. You know? <laughs> right um but yeah no no that's interesting i mean i think i mean I, I don't think that that was like the first and foremost reason i was like oh don't run a kickstarter or anything right now um right my, my biggest reason for it is just to really just you know i think some of the greatest writers talk about that you know they write the hell out of a book or something and then shelf it for a month two months three months and then come back and revisit it you know, mm -hmm. once you're outside of that zone for a little bit, and then you kind of come back in with a fresh vision. Right. It's not really the same. It's not completely the same with this because, you know, I've already written and drawn all these pages, all these pages. So, um, but yeah, in terms of like dialogue and stuff, <clears throat> but right. yeah, man. Um, any, anything else cool going on this week that, that, that you, that you had, uh, maybe read or anything any any kind of comics or shows you you kind of kicked off this week no absolutely not no just straight sit sitting in a dark room and thinking about marketing all week yeah <laughs> it's pretty much that uh that's cool man but so for this week man i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about about scripting um yeah it's kind of one of those necessary things as as a cartoonist or as you know any kind of if you're just strictly a writer or you know trying to make your own story or whatever um scripting is kind of one of these things that sometimes in certain projects i think to, i think of first and then other projects i kind of think of it second you know after drawing and everything 
Um, so I was just kind of wondering a little bit about, about your process, Ken. Um, in terms of scripting, like, is there any kind of specific approach that you typically use for your, for your comic making? Um, is it kind of different from project to project? What is, what is, what is your process like? Uh, basically I'll just have an accumulation of thoughts and those thoughts will just kind of percolate in my mind for like weeks to months to years. It, they'll especially like they'll bring up like crazy images whenever I'm listening to music or whenever I'm just like not thinking about anything. And I'll be like, wow, th that's an amazing moment or that's a really touching subject or a really touching moment. Uh, how can I write a story around that moment so that I can make that happen? Uh, because I have <clears throat> basically a container uh, for all the stories that I currently um, that currently come to mind. That container was like is Air Rider. It's it's what Air Rider High School Hero is. It's like okay, every idea that I have goes into Air Rider if it can fit in there, and then every other idea just kind of. Uh, goes to the wayside or I if it's really good I'll write it down and save it for a different type of story because some of them involve like uh like death or horror or killing or whatever so it wouldn't it wouldn't go in air rider it would go in another spot and then I uh when it comes to actually writing down the story um I first get it in like a point by point list of the the best moments and <clears throat> uh yeah the best moments in the story and try to find a way to logically link all the moments together and in, in a string to where the it, it leads up to the best like the highest or the climax moment in the story and then uh, logically falls back to leading to the next chapter um and all of that is the order i put them in is based off of all the stuff that I've read about scripting over the years about the three act structure structure and um, uh, the the Joseph Campbell's um, what do you even call it? The seven steps, the journey of the hero. I forget. But um, yeah, all that is based off of different storytelling techniques that I've learned over over the years. Yeah. Um, so scripting wise just kind of bringing it back to that so are you just getting your bullet list of story moments you know step one step two step three going down the list and then are you straight going to like thumbnails from that list or are you breaking it down any any further hmm. sometimes i'll do thumbnails and script simultaneously so if I see that the script can't, um, it, the script is saying too much and that uh, the thumbnails doesn't support it on a, um, within the, the page limit that I gave it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll cut some pages or I'll um, add different frames here and there and I'll change up the dialogue based on what's in the frame rather than um, what I wrote in the script. So it's never really a hard and fast process where i'm just writing down the script and then that's exactly what i um, lay out or thumbnail um it's more of a fluid type situation where uh i come up with both and figure out what images are most powerful or most um, interesting to um to the reader and to me and then connect that with words from uh what i want to write in the script and then throughout that whole process, I'm looking at the the different books that I'm reading, or at least I have them within arm's length so I can kind of subconsciously absorb their yeah. knowledge. And, uh, you know, like if I have a, a certain question, I'll open one up or if I need to look up something, I'll just look it up online and yeah, uh, keep that as fluid as it possibly can be uh, up until the very last moment where uh, where the whole page is even drawn. Like it could be colored, inked and all that. And then I could still be changing uh, a little things here and there on um, the lettering, like in the speech balloons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a fluid process all the way up until the uh, final uh, print. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that totally makes sense. I mean, I think for the majority of West, not South, I pretty much followed a, a similar pattern in terms of scripting, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more kind of um, upfront work um, because I would, you know, whenever I first wrote out the story, it was like maybe about a page, a page and a half mm -hmm. paragraph of just like, you know, very high level this needs to happen and this needs to happen and this needs to happen. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I think I, I, I broke that up into chapters. So mm -hmm. I was like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. And I, 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 I settled on five chapters. Right. Um, and when I did that, I was kind of able to, to, to break down what needs to happen in each chapter. Uh -huh. So it, it wasn't like specific like sequencing. It was just like, okay, these things need to happen in order for me to, um, you know, proceed on with, right. with the story. So I kind of had like this very high level typed out kind of outline. Um, then from there, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't do any like specific like detail on, on scenes. Um, maybe if something came to my head, I would jot it down, you know, type mm -hmm. it down or whatever. Um, so then from there I got that. And then that's where I went into my thumbnailing process. Uh -huh. Um, you know, kind of thinking about page count in those chapters. Now, now I wasn't too strict on page count. Um, because like it, I knew it was a graphic novel, you know, it could be as long as I needed it to be. Right. Know? Um, and you know, we, we can do once like the book comes out and all that kind of stuff, like I'd, I'd like to do like a more in-depth kind of, you know, um, review of the project and everything. Um, nice. But then, you know, and then from there, like while I'm thumbnailing, that's when I'm kind of thinking about dialogue because, you know, I'm kind of like thinking about like where the bubbles are going to be. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of like set that aside, you know, that's whenever I go in and draw it and everything. And then typically after the, fe uh, I'm trying to think when I, when I, when I typed down dialogue, um, mm -hmm. Dialogue probably, I want to say dialogue maybe, no, no, dialogue came in probably after the penciling process. Okay. Um, I, 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 you know, before that, during the thumbnails, I kind of thought about it and jotted down maybe things that stuck out at me. But then after I penciled the page, that's when I would come and have, um, you know, a, a Word document. And that's where I would go in and kind of say, this character says this, you know, panel to panel, um, because I found that it was a lot easier for me to do that, you know, go to the computer and type down the dialogue uh -huh. versus like when I had it penciled out, go through and like write it with my pencil, you know, and, right. like, and think about it on the page. Yeah. Um, I would typically like, you know, take a lunch hour and like go to the, to that document and think about, uh, uh, uh dialogue that needed to happen <clears throat> right so that was kind of my 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 process on that um a little bit structured but also not too structured right like west not south um in that kind of versus this new book that i'm working on the one i mentioned up top um uh -huh. brew monsters i've been pre-planning for that a lot more um right and there's kind of some reasoning behind that is because one of them is is because I'm kind of pretty much for the full book. I want to be strict to this six panel grid. Mm -hmm. um, so where I've got, you know, it's six panels per page or is it called yeah. two panel grid? I don't know. But it's it's, you know, two, two and two you know, right going down the page. So I'm kind of I want to do that for every single page um, throughout the book. So it's kind of. Mm -hmm. It's narrowed down to these windows. Um, and, and of course, like, you know, I can break out of the panels if, if I need to and all that. Um, right. But I think because of it being so so much more strict versus West Not South, that's why I'm finding myself having to script it a little more strictly. Uh -huh. um, and, and with my, you know, it's basically page one. I got my six panels. Page two, six panels. And... Um, I'm just doing very high level bullet points on what needs to happen in those panels. Um, right. And then like the, the, the dialogue under that, you know, since it's, they're kind of strict to these windows, I'm kind of, um, 
trying to make the the dialogue short and quippy you know right um and it's more of kind of like a funnier kind of comedy funner book so mm -hmm. i'm trying hard not to bog it down with with a bunch of dialogue um, right so that's kind of another thing that i'm thinking about but yeah so like it's it's kind of, I, I found it interesting this week that's why i was kind of i thought it would be a good topic because it was like man my my scripting processes on both of these projects are pretty different um right and i, I found that pretty pretty interesting yeah man like i never really get a how would you say it? a solid chunk of time where i can just script everything's always um i gotta go to work or i gotta go to school or i gotta do this or i gotta do that and it never it never happens to where well i i guess that's because i'm not working full time in it yet so it's like i can never just okay i'm scripting now now i'm drawing now i'm laying out now i'm doing this now i'm doing that it's never um a solid process i kind of want it to get to that stage where i can make it a hey i'm doing this now and then i can um move on to this and i can move on to that but right now it's just like you got to balance out with like doing a youtube channel for whatever reason and and marketing on social media and trying to get your name out there trying to get people to know you so that they can buy your book so that you can uh, go full time so you can do this and you can do that and um Basically, I'm trying to get the marketing down to just a set of tasks and things that I do <clears throat> every week at the same time so that I can have the creative time to do what I need to do during that time. So it's like, okay, marketing, send out email, uh, put out um, tweets or put out um, Instagram posts, and I know what to do and I know how to um, interact and all that. That's done. And then go on to um, drawing and whatnot and just have a, a solid process that I can keep uh, doing repeatedly week in, week out and growing because a lot of the stuff I've been doing isn't growing. And like I have to find a way to um, basically buy the knowledge, like buy the knowledge that I need to go to the next level uh, in order to make things like actually uh grow more than uh anything i can do on my own so yeah we're talking about scripting and stuff so <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no 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 I, I i see that um just in terms of like finding the time to process i mean i think for me the reason why i've kind of been able to step take a step back a little bit is because you know like i said i'm like in this you know in between phase where i'm kind of like okay let me like take a step back work on something totally fresh right. um something fun that you know that, that i think that i think will be fun and i'm actually i'm, I'm doing this book all um digitally in a pro oh. in a, pro yeah pro uh, procreate um nice so that that's been a kind of another thing that i've been um you know working on and you know finding out different kind of techniques and everything right um, i was about so, to ask like is uh west not south the only book in the in the series uh that's it's it's to be determined um okay okay so it's as of right now it stands alone as a full story book you know one graphic novel everything is in there um but of course i have so many various characters in there um i've created like this kind of neo-western kind of desolate kind of world right and there's just there's so much stuff i can do and play in there um mm -hmm. you know spinoffs with certain characters continuations of certain characters right um you know totally new characters in itself just in the world yeah um so you know of course you know there's always the the the, the, the potential of, of of doing more i mean i, I don't think I don't think at this spot in my career I should be like totally shut off from it, um, mm -hmm. but at, at least for right like right now this very second, yes, you know it's 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 the it's the the full graphic novel is the full story, um, but you know like we have with all this stuff, man, like we've got so many ideas and so many different characters that can go this way and that way, 
right. you know, you, you can go in the past, you can go in the future. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's to be determined, but as of right now, you know, um, it's going to stand on its own as like, it's, it's full story. Awesome. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of, it was always my kind of intention to do that at the beginning. Uh -huh. But of course, as you write and draw and everything, you're like, man, um, I could totally do something in this time period or in the future or, um, you know, a totally different vibe of, of, of the story and everything. So, right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, man. Nice. Um, so <clears throat> I guess to um, sort of like bring things home, um, did you have any like book recommendations or things that you use to uh, to write your your stories and plot them out? Yeah, man, I think. Um, so. One of the books, and I think a book that kind of a lot of people have have read, um, you know, whoever is trying to get into writing or any sort of writing is uh, Stephen King's On Writing. Um, I think I think that that's that's a really good read for any kind of writer or creator. Um, and it's not so much in the respect that it's an educational book. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not really. Um, Stephen King telling you this is how you write, this is how you plot, this is how you write characters. Right. It's more of him, you know, telling you things through his eyes, through his experience, a lot of motivation in there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he's such a a um prolific writer. Yeah. You know, the way that this guy mind this this guy's mind works is just insane. So yeah. reading a book, reading this book is like taking, you know, a 250 page journey into his mind, you know, for him just like letting loose and telling you about his process and everything. Um, yeah. So it's it's a really good read. I recommend it to anyone um, getting into this stuff. Um, yeah, I had a copy that, a long time ago, man. But I don't know what I did with it. I think I gave it away. Yeah, yeah. I still got it over here in the uh in the good old library of books over here nice um but other than that um i really like reading um screenplay books um and right. kind of not even reading them strictly but just kind of like understanding how they're going about writing the story um for an example i've got i've got a few uh christopher nolan um screenplay oh, dope. This is a uh, Dunkirk. Uh huh. So it's the original screenplay for Dunkirk. I love Dunkirk. It's probably my favorite of the Nolan movies. Um, nice. But I'm also kind of a big World War II kind of guy. So right. Um, but not only does it have like the script in here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah. You, you can see the words. Um, yeah. But at the back, it actually has a lot of the storyboards too oh that's dope so it doesn't have the full storyboarded movie but it uh -huh. has a good a good amount of scenes in it right. um and you can kind of go back and flip back and forth and kind of compare it you know with the actual script right um so this so stuff like this is awesome because it gives you a lot of kind of inspirational things um even for like different shots you want to look at, uh -huh. you know, like these thumbnails. Um, another book that I have that's in the same respect as that is um, Parasite storyboard book. Oh, dope! Um, the the fantastic Korean kind of thriller nutso film. <laughs> I gotta uh, see that. Oh, it's it's fantastic, man! You, you definitely need to see it. Yeah, um, but this is great because. Bong, Bong Joon Ho, he actually put the whole script in here, but he also like thumbnail or not thumbnail storyboarded everything. Um, can't really see it that great, but I see a little bit. Yeah, so he's got like his own kind of like quick little rough sketches in here in terms of like getting cinematography down, but he also like just puts in like photographs that he's that he took. Mm -hmm. to like give like reference reference for those shots right um 
And like, you can't really, I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see like some of these drawings are very crude and kind of rough. Yeah. Um, and, but it's like exactly what he needs to, to make a best picture <laughs> winning Oscar film, you know? Right. Which is, and just like thinking about that, it's inspirational because like, you know, these are just like quick little sketches. Um, you know, he's writing his notes for like, you know, fixed camera here, moving camera there. Nice. Um, but they're just real quick. But, you know, the guy's a visionary and it's yeah. kind of awesome to kind of see his his mind work in this book. Um, yeah. And they like like they actually call it a, a graphic novel in storyboards is, is what they dub the book. Right. Um, so this one's a real good one for writing and visual. Um, the last one here is kind of one that I think a lot of people know about. Just uh, on the, uh, a quick note on that previous book, yeah. like the the thing I like saying about um, about that behind the scenes stuff is like how simple great storytelling is. Is like it doesn't need to be like it eventually turned into a big budget film but it doesn't need to be anything like that behind the scenes like as a comic book if it reads and if it like resonates emotionally it doesn't even need to be a like a, a big film like it always starts with that that simple idea of just conveying the the storytelling and the emotions to the viewer first and then they they can take it and put the uh, special effects and all that stuff on it they can put all the icing on top of the cake uh, as you can say, like, um, cause I see a lot of movies where, and I think everyone can uh, attest to this is where there's a whole bunch of effects and you got the best actors in Hollywood and whatnot, but then the story, everything behind the scene just fall, falls like flat so that no, no amount of effects or, or like, uh, CGI can make up for the lack in, um, in b basic like foundational storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's that's one of the big things with with that book. You know, it's your it's broken down to its vote most like minuscule form into like these almost just looks like sketchbook sketches, but you know, right. this was like the seed for like this historic classic movie, you know. Right. So yeah, yeah, that, that's why I love looking at that kind of stuff, man. Um storyboard books are great um the last one here is probably one that a lot of people have seen before but it's called the the five c's of cinematography mm. um and this is it's 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 an older book um but it gives you like a lot of the basics in terms of like how to shoot film um which on you know obviously it kind of goes hand in hand um with comic making because you're constantly thinking of of interesting composition or consistent composition um throughout your books and everything right so that's another good one there um but yeah that's 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 kind of the few recommendations i got um storyboard books are probably my my favorite reference um when it comes to like you know more educational kind of things you know when you're looking at it um to like learn things kind of more um granular and obviously you know the other textbooks or the comics you know reading yeah. comics looking at comics understanding um you know how how, how the greats do it um, yeah I got what about you, 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 you got any you got any books oh yeah i got uh four books right here they're not the ones that i always use for for things but i always like to flip through them for like a quick reference and so then um we'll start here with writing down the time stamp because I want to make sure we get this here. <laughs> All right. I have, have to cut that one out, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But uh, here goes uh, Manga in Theory and Practice. That's by Hirohiko Araki, the uh, creator of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And basically, it's a textbook, you know. There's, there's some drawing and, and art in it, but... It's mainly just a, a brass tacks, down to earth, uh, how to make manga in the manga industry. Um, I think it mostly pertains to shonen manga, but um, 
out of all the pages that I've read, it, it really helps put you in the mindset of the editor of a shonen manga. Like, he, he's telling you that they want to see something that hooks you page one, like on the cover. <laughs> like, you don't have time to like middle, like just mill about and introduce a story and say hey i'm this character and i live in this world no they want you like to like get the reader on the first uh page and so he'll talk you through like how to um he has what you call the uh the golden road of of manga and how you make stories that really uh, resonate with readers and whatnot and he'll walk you through the whole process and basically i read it or i'll like flip through it and reference it whenever i need to like um figure something out about my chapter that I'm working on to uh, kind of get me unstuck or get some ideas flowing with it. Yeah. Nice. And so that's uh, the first book. Um, the next book I have is called On Directing Film by David Mamet. I don't know if it's Mamet or Mame or whatever. But um, yeah, this book is, is very short and really good. It's just about keeping your storytelling very simple like it boils everything down uh, uh about your storytelling to just what you need to convey the idea of your shot like you don't need to overdo it you don't need to put any effects on it you just this is if you're trying to show somebody stealing something show the item show the person show the place and show them like taking it and like hiding in the back pocket or whatever you just need to show it sh it talks about the specific shots meaning like what needs to be in the picture frame uh of the movie when you're showing a specific action and so it, it's showing like okay show this first show this second show this third in a specific sequence so that it conveys the idea that you're trying to go for um that way you don't even need to make things uh you don't need to focus on like special movements or different angles of the shot you just need to show exactly what needs to be shown to get the idea across and that's why i like that book because it 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 really strips down um the storytelling process and i like things that strip down the storytelling process because i'm trying to understand what uh gets people at the root and not and look past all the embellishments and all the colors and all the lights and music and sound. I'm trying to look at what at the root core of the story is, is, is grabbing people in the heart. Um, and then next is this book called uh, Techniques of the Settling Writer by Dwight V. Swain. And this book um, I actually found by looking up online some like writing techniques. And there was this uh right specific technique called motivation reaction units which is where um the whole story is driven by basically mru's motivation reaction units where um the main character is motivated to do something and then something happens that he has to re react to it because it's getting in the way of his ultimate goal so it really i don't know the the thoughts in the first few chapters of the book, it, you just have to buy this book. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just so, it's so solid. Um, I read it, I started reading it in high school and I was just like, this is better than anything I've read before. And the main reason why I feel like it's so great is because it says throw out all the um, uh, writing exercises and workshops and whatnot all of that is just tedium and a waste of time and i was just like finally somebody who who's saying what i'm thinking because i i always i would do the writing exercises in other books or you know other tutorials but i would think like oh, man this is boring i don't feel like i'm really writing yet i feel like i'm just uh practicing to get to writing but he says do away with all that just write and write from the heart um and so and, and it gives you techniques to make it make the copy uh 
like really grab the reader, make the writing really grab the reader. Oh, were you about to say something? No, no, no. That that, that sounds good, man. I, I I need to check that one out. I yeah, yeah, it it's yet. very good. Uh, it's, it's really helped me. I think one of the most in in writing like comics specifically. Um, and then the last book is uh, Dramatica. I actually don't even read this one. Uh, <laughs> I use this uh, this software that they created. I'll look through this every once in a while. I like having it next to me just to kind of uh, reference and flip through. But this one is probably the most succinct, uh, compact, and like, um, well, I wouldn't call it compact. I would say it's the most succinct and uh, a word that means complete, but not complete, you know, theory of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And it basically divides everything into fours. Even the three act structure is now a four act structure. And I always felt like, uh, stories are best told in like four acts or at least in four movements throughout the story because then it gives you like a complete um, uh, it gives you a complete story by the end of it and that's the um, the whole goal of Dramatica is to give you a complete story like if, if you ever watched a story where you felt like you were full by the end of it like you were like wow I got everything I wanted out of this story it's likely what you would call like a, a complete story. And that's what Dramatica is all about creating. It's creating a story from four viewpoints uh, within the story mind, you could say. It's like I, we, you, and they. So it's talking about the first point, first person perspective, I meaning me or the character, the main character in the story. Um, you meaning, uh, I guess the overall uh, story like the person looking at the um the events happening the uh, we the, the reader by by you uh not necessarily the reader but it it's different viewpoints like four different viewpoints the main character the uh the character that kind of influences the main character uh the perspective of those two characters together and then the overall story perspective where um where it focuses on what everyone's focusing on and the most complete stories that dramatica has cataloged has been through uh actually pixar where their stories are so um uh their stories are so complete feeling like they they are so kind of formulaic but not not in a bad way yeah formulaic but not in a bad way but like um they're so fulfilling or like they're so succinct like you can't really poke holes in their story because they tell you everything that you need to know by the end yeah. and uh that's why they were so popular for so long whereas an incomplete story is missing one of these uh viewpoints that they mentioned and then the story just kind of goes until it sort of ends uh, with Dramatica, you get a story that's fully expressed and fully told. You know what and I call that movie? That that just goes until it 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 ends. So what? Oh, what what, what is it? Art house film, man. It's art, <laughs> art house. house. It's that's art house, is. man. You don't get it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. But yeah, that, those are the four books that I always like reference whenever I have to um. Uh, make a script or write something out and i'll use the uh, dan Harmon story circle to also um like plot things out and figure things out because it's really um a solid uh technique that he that he's created and it's divided into four like it's eight points divided into four so i also try to mix that in with uh, dramatica and all the other things that i'm learning so uh it really helps well, yeah, dude, that's that's a lot of a lot of theories jumbled jumbling up. You're picking and choosing and kind of putting it all into like this one ultimate Ken theory on writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been studying this specifically for I don't know, like more than a decade. Like I, I really just want to figure out um, storytelling and what makes it tick and how it works, and that's why I chose comics because it, it's just a um, the best most um it's the closest means that i have to create 
uh, stories and yeah. put it out to people. I don't like writing words, so I don't do novels. I, I can't like film movies. It requires me talking to other people who wants to do that. And so like comics is just like, you know, I get to do the whole thing myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think my, my approach is probably a lot more organic than that. Just kind of, um, you know, I, I've read so many things. I've studied so many things in school. Um, I've, I've written so many things. I used to write mm -hmm. a lot, just writing like novel things, articles, those types of things. Um, so I, I think at this point, like I'm just more organic, you know, I, I, I don't right. think I'm not as, you know, searching for the absolute truth of every story telling technique you know i'm more of kind of right. like i understand things and i i take that um interpret it as i can and just and just let it flow out that's nice. kind of yeah kind of one little thing you mentioned there you said what was it dramatica a, a software you said there it's a software yeah yeah it's a software um it's so, basically so it's like it'll it'll break it down for you or something is that it's something like that so like if you have an idea for what you want your character to do in the story um it falls into basically uh a certain few like character dynamics it, it's hard to describe and dramatica is like so thick and so um but 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 when you say software you're not talking about like a computer software are you no it is a computer software it is a software. okay Okay. Yeah, so the book is the theory, and then yeah. the software is how you can put it into practice. And so the software is like basically you put your characters, you write their names, you write their um their dialogue and their um or like you write what's gonna happen in the different acts, and then if you don't know how to end the story or if you don't know what should go in a certain part of the story, Dramatica is able to almost like compute what should happen in a specific area of the story so that it can become a complete story by the end of the telling. Uh, meaning like if they, if your character is supposed to go to the grocery and get some food, uh, it's like he goes out the door, he gets in his car, blank, blank, blank happens. And then he's at home eating food and you don't know what's supposed to happen in that middle part. Dramatica will be like, he's supposed to go to the store in this middle part and then you fill in the story details you write the story in that specific spot what's supposed to what's supposed to happen mm. and then um so we're talking it, like we're talking early onset of ai writing literally <laughs> literally it's uh, uh the early onset of that and they've already made a um an ai um program to integrate dramatica into it and have ai uh help you form the story and whatnot people are already like doing it but it costs too much like you know for somebody regular like me to even like look at it but that's something i really want to look into at some point but right now it's just like i got the basic software it used to work for uh, mac but now it only works on my um on my uh desktop my windows computer but yeah um Interesting, man. Those are those are, those are some some good recommendations, man. Um, yeah, I think if you guys check out those books, check out some of the books that I mentioned. I mean, I think you get some really good um, material, study material there. Um, for real. But uh, other than that, Ken, you got anything else for the? For no, the, man. Yeah, good. I think good I've talked long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was some good stuff, man. Some real good, real good content. Let us know, guys, uh, viewers, all you guys out there watching. Um, guys and girls, I should say, um, let us know how you how you liked this this episode. Was it was it informative? Um, have you guys read any of these books that that we mentioned? Um, how do you, how do you guys script? Because it's kind of one of those things that I think is um, might be kind of pretty pretty unique to the to the individual creator. Um, so this has been a good discussion, Mr. Ken. Man, let the people out though out there know where they they can find you. Uh, everyone can find me at x twitter um at the commie ken and you can also find me on instagram at commie ken and i also have a, a web comic called air rider high school hero you can find that on global comics and um yeah 
uh, I'll be launching the Kickstarter in March next year. So I'm um, working up to, to get to that. Awesome. Awesome stuff, man. Um, and you guys can find me at Nico underscore rights on Instagram and on X. You can also follow me for free and subscribe to my Substack at Nico Rodriguez dot substack dot com um posting updates and everything uh, more in-depth updates on there for like my graphic novel and everything and i'm also just as i mentioned up top um brew monsters is going to be my um my 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 comic that i'm going to be serializing on there here pretty soon um maybe uh, probably won't start by the time this this launches because i'm kind of in the process of, of of getting some some pages ahead um but definitely go go over there and um, subscribe for free. You'll get you'll you'll get the story there for free. Um, so yeah, go ahead and go ahead and do that. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Peace.